Pigeonhole Principle from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. The text of this recording is current as of the 3rd of June 2021. This article contains the following sections. 1. Etymology. 2. Examples. 3. Uses and applications. 4. Alternative formulations. 5. Strong form. 6. Generalizations of the pigeonhole principle. 7. Infinite sets. and 8. Quantum mechanics. In mathematics, the pigeonhole principle states that if n items are put into m containers with n greater than m, then at least one container must contain more than one item. For example, if one has three gloves, then one must have at least two right-handed gloves, or at least two left-handed gloves, because one has three objects, but only two categories of handedness to put them into. This seemingly obvious statement, a type of counting argument, can be used to demonstrate possibly unexpected results. For example, given that the population of London is greater than the maximum number of hairs that can be present on a human's head, then the pigeonhole principle requires that there must be at least two people in London who have the same number of hairs on their heads. There's an image. Pigeons in holes. Here there are n equals 10 pigeons in m equals 9 holes. Since 10 is greater than 9, the pigeonhole principle says that at least one hole has more than one pigeon. The top left hole has two pigeons. Although the pigeonhole principle appears as early as 1624 in a book attributed to Jean Lerichon, it is commonly called Dirichlet's box principle or Dirichlet's drawer principle after an 1834 treatment of the principle by Peter Gustave Lejeune Dirichlet under the name Schubfage Prinzip, drawer principle or shelf principle. The principle has several generalizations and can be stated in various ways. In a more quantified version, for natural numbers k and m, if n equals km plus 1 objects are distributed among m sets, then the pigeonhole principle asserts that at least one of the sets will contain at least k plus 1 objects. For arbitrary n and m, this generalizes to k plus 1 equals the floor of n minus 1 over m plus 1, which is equal to the ceiling of n over m. Though the most straightforward application is to finite sets, such as pigeons and boxes, it is also used with infinite sets that cannot be put into one-to-one -one correspondence. To do so, requires the formal statement of the pigeonhole principle, which is, there does not exist an injective function whose codomain is smaller than its domain. Advanced mathematical proofs like Siegel's lemma build upon this more general concept. Section 1. Etymology. There's an image, pigeonhole message boxes at Stanford University. Dirichlet published his works in both French and German, using either the German Schubfach or the French tiroir. The strict original meaning of these terms corresponds to the English drawer, that is, an open-topped box that can be slid in and out of the cabinet that contains it. Dirichlet wrote about distributing pearls among drawers. These terms were morphed to the word pigeonhole in the sense of a small open space in a desk, cabinet or wall for keeping letters or papers, metaphorically rooted in structures that house pigeons. Because furniture with pigeonholes is commonly used for storing or sorting things into many categories, such as letters in a post office or room keys in a hotel, the translation pigeonhole may be a better rendering of Dirichlet's original drawer metaphor. That understanding of the term pigeonhole, referring to some furniture features, is fading, especially among those who do not speak English natively but as a lingua franca in the scientific world, in favour of the more pictorial interpretation literally involving pigeons and holes. The suggestive, though not misleading, interpretation of pigeonhole as dovecut has lately found its way back to a German back translation of the pigeonhole principle as the Taubenschlangprinzip. Besides the original Schubfachprinzip in German and Prinzip de Terroir in French, other literal translations are still used in Bulgarian, Chinese, Danish, Dutch, Hungarian, Italian, Japanese, Persian, Polish, Swedish, Turkish, and Vietnamese. Section 2. Examples. Section 2.1. Sock picking. 
A Shuma drawer contains a mixture of black socks and blue socks, each of which can be worn on either foot, and that you are pulling a number of socks from the drawer without looking. What is the minimum number of pooled socks required to guarantee a pair of the same colour? Using the pigeonhole principle, to have at least one pair of the same colour, m equals two holes, one per colour, using one pigeonhole per colour, you need pull only three socks from the drawer, n equals three items. Either you have three of one colour, or you have two of one colour and one of the other. Section 2.2. Handshaking. If there are n people who can shake hands with one another, where n is greater than 1, the pigeonhole principle shows that there is always a pair of people who will shake hands with the same number of people. In this application of the principle, the hole to which a person is assigned is the number of hands shaken by that person. Since each person shakes hands with some number of people from 0 to n minus 1, there are n possible holes. On the other uh, hand, either the 0 hole or the n minus 1 hole, or both, must be empty, for it is impossible, if n is greater than 1, for some person to shake hands with everybody else, while some person shakes hands with nobody. This leaves n people to be placed into at most n minus 1 non-empty holes, so that the principle applies. This handshaking example is equivalent to the statement that in any graph with more than one vertex, there is at least one pair of vertices that share the same degree. This can be seen by associating each person with a vertex and each edge with a handshake. Section 2.3. Hair counting. One can demonstrate there must be at least two people in London with the same number of hairs on their heads as follows. Since a typical human head has an average of around 150,000 hairs, it is reasonable to assume, as an upper bound, that no one has more than one million hairs on their head. M equals one million holes. There are more than one million people in London. N is bigger than one million items. Assigning a pigeonhole to each number of hairs on a person's head, and assigning people to pigeonholes according to the number of hairs on their head, there must be at least two people assigned to the same pigeonhole by the one million and first assignment, because they have the same number of hairs on their heads, or N is greater than M. Assuming London has 8.9 million people, one can even state that at least nine Londoners have the same number of hairs, as having eight Londoners in each of the one million pigeonholes accounts for only eight million people. For the average case, M equals 150,000, with the constraint fewest overlaps, there will be at most one person assigned to every pigeonhole, and the 150,000 and first person assigned to the same pigeonhole as someone else. In the absence of this constraint, there may be empty pigeonholes because the collision happens before the 150,000 and first person. The principle just proves the existence of an overlap. It says nothing of the number of overlaps, which falls under the subject of probability distributions. There is a passing, satirical allusion in English to this version of the principle in A History of the Athenian Society, prefixed to A Supplement to the Athenian Oracle, being a collection of the remaining questions and answers to the old Athenian Mercuries, printed for Andrew Bell, London, 1710. It seems that the question, whether there were any two persons in the world that have an equal number of hairs on their head, had been raised in the Athenian Mercury before 1704. Perhaps the first written reference to the pigeonhole principle appears in 1622 in a short sentence of the Latin work Selecte Propositionis by the French Jesuit Jean Lerichon, where he wrote, It is necessary that two men have the same number of hairs, echus or other things, as each other. The full principle was spelled out two years later, with additional examples, in another book that has often been attributed to Lerichon, but may have been written by one of his students. Section 2.4. The birthday problem. The birthday problem asks, for a set of n randomly chosen people, what is the probability that some pair of them will have the same birthday? The problem itself is mainly concerned with counterintuitive probabilities. However, we can also tell by the pigeonhole principle that, if there are at least 367 people in the room, there is at least one pair of people who share the same birthday, with 100% probability as there are only 366 possible birthdays to choose from, including February the 29th, if present. Section 2.5. Team Tournament. 
Imagine seven people who want to play in a tournament of teams, n equals seven items, with a limitation of only four teams, m equals four holes, to choose from. The pigeonhole principle tells us that they cannot all play for different teams. There must be at least one team featuring at least two of the seven players. The floor of n minus one all over m plus one equals the floor of seven minus one all over four plus one which is equal to the floor of 6 over 4. Section 2.6. Subset sum. Any subset of size 6 from the set S equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on up to 9, must contain two elements whose sum is 10. The pigeonholes will be labelled by the two element subsets, 1 and 9, 2 and 8, 3 and 7, 4 and 6, and the singleton 5, five pigeonholes in all. When the six pigeons, elements of the size six subset, are placed into these pigeonholes, each pigeon going into the pigeonhole that has it contained in its label, at least one of the pigeonholes labelled with a two element subset will have two pigeons in it. Section 3. Uses and Applications The principle can be used to prove that any lossless compression algorithm, provided it makes some inputs smaller, as the name compression suggests, will also make some other inputs larger. Otherwise, the set of all input sequences up to a given length L could be mapped to the much smaller set of all sequences of length less than L without collisions, because the compression is lossless, a possibility which the pigeonhole principle excludes. A notable problem in mathematical analysis is, for a fixed irrational number A, to show that the set with the fractional parts of n times a, where n is an integer, is dense in the closed interval from 0 to 1. One finds that it is not easy to explicitly find integers n and m such that the absolute value of n a minus m is less than e, where e greater than 0 is a small positive number and a is some arbitrary irrational number. But if one takes big M such that 1 over big M is less than e, by the pigeonhole principle, there must be an n1 and an n2 belonging to the set of numbers from 1, 2, etc. right up to big M plus 1, such that n1 times a and n2 times a are in the same integer subdivision of size 1 over m. There are only m such subdivisions between consecutive integers. In particular, one can find n1 and n2 such that n1 times a is in the open interval from p plus k over m to p plus k plus 1 over m, and n2 times a is in the open interval from q plus k over m to q plus k plus 1 over m, for some p and q integers and k in the set from 0, 1, etc. up to m minus 1. One can then easily verify that n2 minus n1 all multiplied by a is in the open interval from q minus p minus 1 over m to q minus p plus 1 over m, that's the open interval, this implies that the fractional part of n e is less than 1 over m is less than e, where n equals n2 minus n1 or n equals n1 minus n2. This shows that 0 is a limit point of the set of fractional parts of n e. One can then use this fact to prove the case for p in the interval from 0 to 1, including 1 but not 0. Find n such that the fractional part of n e is less than 1 over m, which is less than e, then if p belongs to the interval from above 0 to 1 over m, including that number, the proof is complete. Otherwise, p is in the interval uh, greater than j over m, less than or equal to j plus 1 all over m, and by setting k as the supremum of the set of r belonging to natural numbers, such that r times the fractional part of n a is less than j over m, one obtains that the absolute value of the fractional part of k plus 1 all multiplied by n e and then minus p is less than 1 over m, which is less than e. Variants occur in a number of proofs. In the proof of the pumping lemma for regular languages, a version that mixes finite and infinite sets is used. If infinitely many objects are placed in finitely many boxes, then there exist two objects that share a box. In Fisk's solution of the art gallery problem, a sort of converse is used. If n objects are placed into k boxes, then there is a box containing at most 
n over k objects. Section 4. Alternative formulations. The following are alternative formulations of the pigeonhole principle. 1. If n objects are distributed over m places, and if n is greater than m, then some place receives at least two objects. 2. Equivalent formulation of 1. If n objects are distributed over n places in such a way that no place receives more than one object, then each place receives exactly one object. 3. If n objects are distributed over m places, and if n is less than m, then some place receives no object. And 4. Equivalent formulation of 3. If n objects are distributed over n places in such a way that no place receives no object, then each place receives exactly one object. Section 5. Strong form. Let q1, q2, and so on up to qn be positive integers. If q1 plus q2 plus dot 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 plus qn minus n plus 1 objects are distributed into n boxes, then either the first box contains at least q1 objects, or the second box contains at least q2 objects, and so on and so forth, or the nth box contains at least qn objects. The simple form is obtained from this by taking q1 is equal to q2 is equal to dot 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 is equal to qn is equal to 2, which gives n plus 1 objects. Taking q1 equal to q2 equal to dot 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 equal to qn equal to r, gives the more quantified version of the principle, namely, let n and r be positive integers. If n times r minus 1 plus 1 objects are distributed into n boxes, then at least one of the boxes contains r or more of the objects. This can also be stated as, if k discrete objects are to be allocated to n containers, then at least one container must hold at least the ceiling of k over n objects where the ceiling function denotes the smallest integer larger than or equal to x. Similarly, at least one container must hold no more than the floor of k over n objects, where the floor function denotes the largest integer smaller than or equal to x. Section 6. Generalizations of the pigeonhole principle. A probabilistic generalization of the pigeonhole principle states that if n pigeons are randomly put into m pigeonholes with uniform probability 1 over m, then at least one pigeonhole will hold more than one pigeon with probability 1 minus the falling factorial of m and n over m to the power of n, where the falling factorial of m and n is m times n minus 1 times m minus 2 dot 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 times m minus n plus 1. For n equals 0 and for n equals 1, and m greater than 0, that probability is 0. In other words, if there is just one pigeon, there cannot be a conflict. For n greater than m, more pigeons than pigeonholes, it is 1, in which case it coincides with the ordinary pigeonhole principle. But even if the number of pigeons does not exceed the number of pigeonholes, n is less than or equal to m, due to the random nature of the assignment of pigeons to pigeonholes, there is often a substantial chance that clashes will occur. For example, if two pigeons are randomly assigned to four pigeonholes, there is a 25% chance that at least one pigeonhole will hold more than one pigeon. For five pigeons and ten holes, that probability is about 69.76%, and for ten pigeons and twenty holes, it is about 93.45%. If the number of holes stays fixed, there is always a greater probability of a pair when you add more pigeons. This problem is treated at much greater length in the Birthday Paradox article. A further probabilistic generalization is that when a real valued random variable x has a finite mean, e of x, then the probability is non-zero that x is greater than or equal to e of x, and similarly the probability is non-zero that x is less than or equal to e of x. To see that this implies the standard pigeonhole principle, take any fixed arrangement of n pigeons into m holes, and let x be the number of pigeons in a hole chosen uniformly at random. The mean of x is n over m, so if there are more pigeons than holes, the mean is greater than 1. Therefore, 
x is sometimes at least 2. Section 7. Infinite sets. The pigeonhole principle can be extended to infinite sets by phrasing it in terms of cardinal numbers. If the cardinality of set A is greater than the cardinality of set B, then there is no injection from A to B. However, in this form the principle is tautological, since the meaning of the statement that the cardinality of set A is greater than the cardinality of set B is exactly that there is no injective map from A to B. However, adding at least one element to a finite set is sufficient to ensure that the cardinality increases. Another way to phrase the pigeonhole principle for finite sets is similar to the principle that finite sets are dedicated finite. Let A and B be finite sets. If there is a surjection from A to B that is not injective, then no surjection from A to B is injective. In fact, no function of any kind from A to B is injective. This is not true for infinite sets. Consider the function on the natural numbers that sends 1 and 2 to 1, 3 and 4 to 2, 5 and 6 to 3, and so on. There is a similar principle for infinite sets. If uncountably many pigeons are stuffed into countably many pigeonholes, there will exist at least one pigeonhole having uncountably many pigeons stuffed into it. This principle is not a generalization of the pigeonhole principle for finite sets, however. It is in general false for finite sets. In technical terms, it says that if A and B are finite sets, such that any surjective function from A to B is not injective, then there exists an element B of the set B, such that there exists a bijection between the pre-image of the element B and the set A. This is a quite different statement and is absurd for large finite cardinalities. Section 8. Quantum Mechanics Yakir Aharonov and co-authors have presented arguments that the pigeonhole principle may be violated in quantum mechanics, and proposed interferometric experiments to test the pigeonhole principle in quantum mechanics. However, later research has called this conclusion into question. In a January 2015 archive preprint, researchers Alistair Ray and Ted Forgan at the University of Birmingham performed a theoretical wave function analysis employing the standard pigeonhole principle on the flight of electrons at various energies through an interferometer. If the electrons had no interaction strength at all, they would each produce a single, perfectly circular peak. At high interaction strength, each electron produces four distinct peaks for a total of 12 peaks on the detector. These peaks are the result of the four possible interactions each electron could experience, alone, together with the first other particle only, together with the second other particle only, or all three together. If the interaction strength was fairly low, as would be the case in many real experiments, the deviation from a zero interaction pattern would be nearly indiscernible, much smaller than the lattice spacing of atoms in solids, such as the detectors used for observing these patterns. This would make it very difficult, or even impossible, to distinguish a weak but non-zero interaction strength from no interaction whatsoever and thus give an illusion of three electrons that did not interact, despite all three passing through two paths. This sound file, and all text in the article, are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash by hyphen sa slash 3.0.